Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. Today we have a real special guest with us. It's Destiny, Destiny in Colorado. Introduce yourself, Destiny, and welcome finally to the podcast. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Destiny Cool. I'm actually a junior at the University of Colorado Boulder. I'm studying biochemical engineering with a minor in biomedical. I'm hoping to go into the fields of prosthetics, and I will be getting my PhD hopefully in the next few years. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, we have many things in common. One thing is EdSnaps. Maybe tell us a little bit, what is EdSnaps and how are we involved in EdSnaps? EdSnaps is a nonprofit organization focused on helping underprivileged female identifying students pretty much find interest in STEM, learn about STEM, find a career in STEM. Over these past two years that I've been with EdSnaps, I was an e-counselor and I worked with Girls ranging from about 12 years old to about 18. With COVID and everything, I was actually able to meet these girls online because if it wasn't for COVID, I wouldn't be able to meet these girls because most of them are from the Bronx. And so I got to connect with a whole bunch of younger girls that are interested in STEM. And growing up, I never had that. STEM is important, but it is what it is. You will get a career no matter what. And then Ed Snaps has pretty much taught me how to actually work with females and be that mentor and their coach also and try to be like, okay no this is what I did this is what I learned so you could take this route you could take this route and it's just helping them find confidence not only in themselves but in also their abilities how did you get interested in STEM for a long time I wanted to get into politics but then I was everyone does politics I want to do something different And I actually got interested in prosthetics about my junior year of high school because I was so set on being a lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer for so long. I wanted to work in the Pentagon. I had my whole life set up. And then one summer, I was a lifeguard um, at our local pool. And I saw this little five-year-old boy, at most five, I believe. And he was just running around, running around. And then he had two prosthetic legs. Both of his legs were prosthetics. And I remember too, the wrapping of it was Thomas the Train. No matter what, I will always remember that. And just seeing him interact with the other kids and just be this happy-go-lucky kid, I want to be that difference for someone. And so that's when I started researching more into prosthetics. How do I make a career out of this? How do I give back to these people, like have things taken from them? And just give them that little light, that little motivation and everything. And so that pretty much started my interest in STEM. I learned that I had to take engineering classes in order to create things. And I would have to take a lot of science classes to learn about all the materials behind it. And I was like, I love STEM majorly. I I see STEM in everything. A lot of people are, oh, you're either a STEM person or you're an arts person. They mash together constantly. And that's what EdSnaps are shown too, because they're more of STEAM, which includes art, because you see art in everything and STEM is in everything. And with them combined, you see the both of just the beauty in them. And I love that they added the A for art into STEM, because it's necessary. Exactly. And some of the Engineering is also art, right? Most so definitely. Music has art. Uh, music has math. It's just a form of art. I, I love that as well. You said it, so you were an e-counselor for women. And because of COVID, actually, we can be well thankful because you're in Colorado, they're in the Bronx. And some of the girls were also from Ghana. Thanks to the platform, you were able to connect. That's fantastic what technology can do. Exactly. 
And thanks to COVID also and through Red Snaps, I got to meet you. It works out. <laughs> Tell us more about the project you're working on. Actually, I'm working um, on a project for Women in Space. Women in Space is a big organization. It's actually also part of the United Nations. There's a chapter in the United Nations of the Women in Space. And it's pretty much kind of at snaps where it's trying to get more females in the STEM industry, specifically in the space industry, since it is like STEM, a very male dominated industry, just having more women whether they have a background of politics or a background in environmental aspects like engineering or anything like that, just trying to get all women into it and have them be more interested in space and develop further into space. And so over the summer for about three or four weeks, I got to interview a whole bunch of women and learn how they got into STEM and what they see are boundaries in STEM and how to get over these boundaries and pretty much just advocate for women to get into space industries, how they got into it, and how there's not one clear-cut person to be in STEM. Anyone could be in STEM. It doesn't matter who you are, what your background is at all. So anyone and everyone can be there. And so I'm compiling an ebook and also short videos on these women to promote everything. Before we recorded, you were talking about asking questions how was it before you met at snaps and now i'm always curious how do we learn how to ask questions and i gave you the statistics mm -hmm. children are asking a hundred questions and we as adults ask two questions which is crazy to me in my head <laughs> i thought we would at least ask a little bit more than two questions a day well before at snaps i was terrified of asking questions i didn't have the confidence in myself to ask questions I saw asking questions as something that you didn't do. If you ask the questions, it's either because you weren't listening or you didn't understand and you had to understand by yourself. But then through EdSnaps and also working alongside you and hearing how you ask questions and how, talking to all these amazing people and getting their stories, I learned that you should ask questions. It's easier to ask questions. You need to ask questions because if you don't, what's the point? That's how you learn and that's how you build relationships and lasting relationships rather than you talk to a person for two weeks and you can't connect anymore. It helps with networking a lot, especially I went to a conference in October, absolutely terrified for it. I was like, I don't know how to ask questions. I don't know how to connect with people. I don't know how to network. But once I actually put myself out there, the simplest of questions, oh, where are you from? What are you studying? What do you do for work? Do you like work? What do you like about work? And then also talking to a whole bunch of companies and seeing what I wanted in a company, like asking them, not only are they interviewing me, I also have to interview them. Just finding that confidence within myself to ask those questions came a long ways from I'm going to hide in a corner. No one look at me now. I'm OK. I can have a conversation with the person. I can learn about this person and not only learn about them, but also learn about myself in it. I love that story. It's about self-confidence. <laughs> It's about being courageous. It's about asking the question. And sometimes we have the question in our heads and we don't dare to ask. Exactly. Second guessing ourselves. What is the best question that you can ask? What is your key question that you ask when you interview somebody? That's a very good question, actually. <laughs> I guess my go-to question, I'm more of a personal basis with things. I like to ask how they got interested in whatever they're into because I like to hear the story behind it because that's also another aspect of oh I'm learning you as a person I'm going to find connections between me and you when I don't think there's any connections in the beginning definitely how did you get into this why did you get into this and also where do you see yourself later on because you have yourself now you have yourself in the past and it's okay how do these two combine to create your future We can always ask questions. I'm not the expert. Tell me more. Exactly. Any simple stuff. Anything else? What else can I learn from you? And always be positive and thankful. Mm -hmm. Grateful for the time that the person, the expert is spending with us. Definitely. I think these are the, like sometimes we think too complicated in a way. The simpler the mm -hmm. question And what I also have learned, and I'm still practicing that, ask one question at a time. Definitely. Don't ask five questions because I know I've done it. 
And then people said, and what was the other question? Um, that should give you an indication. If you interview somebody, have a set of questions, but then also add. I think that's what you and I were discussing. If you feel like we can go a little deeper and just take the time before you go on to the next question. Exactly. And I feel like it's more active listening than passive. You're there for the one question you hear them through and more than likely more questions are going to pop up than what you have written down and a better conversation than what you thought was going to happen will happen. If you just take the time to ask the one question and actually listen and then develop questions from there. It's almost like peeling the onion. You have one question and then you can dig deeper. Exactly. I like my question. I can share it here. What do you do when you don't work? What do I do when I don't work? That's a very good question because I feel like I'm constantly working. I guess try not to stress anymore about working is a big thing. I guess one of the bigger things I do is try to go hiking or just be out in nature because nature is a big safe haven for me because I'm so used to be being behind a computer constantly looking at code or hours on end looking at numbers and getting a headache from all the numbers and just constantly having my brain overdrive. But then once you're in nature and actually go on, even if it's a small little hike, it could be, I have a creek actually near my house and that I walk almost every single day. And that's just so calming and it makes me find zen where I don't feel like I could find zen in my own work. And it's a nice mood booster where I'm like, okay, I am okay. We don't have to stress about anything. This is what I'll do. And we know the Dalai Lama said, if you have a busy day ahead of you, meditate more. And meditate more doesn't mean sitting in a cross-legged position, but meditation is also focused. When you go to your creek, it's the creek in you and the rest of the world can wait till exactly. there's time for you to go back. Anything else? There's our favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I could think of. Anybody who wants to enter the STEM, where can they find you or what recommendations would you have for them? Oh, definitely. Pretty much through EdSnaps is a very good way to not only reach myself, but also reach a great network of people that will motivate you and will help you find what you want to do. Besides that, LinkedIn. Destiny is also the person who is Working on the Instagram handle on Take It From The Iron Woman, she produces all the beautiful content. So thank you so much. And we look forward to having more interview guests. Awesome. Thank you. What is your question that you tend to ask? Or what is the question that you tend to forget? What will you take away from this episode? And again, thank you so much, Destiny for a great job helping Take It From The Iron Woman grow on social media, on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Instagram. Take It From The Iron Woman, we have episodes every Monday, every Wednesday. Don't miss out, there's something for everybody. You learn how to ask questions, how to listen better. You can learn something with us. Thank you so much for your support and we'll talk next time.